Hi there guys and welcome back to another Arsenal review video. We're going to be covering Arsenal's away trip to Spain, Sevilla, on Tuesday night where we came away with a rare victory from Spain. Over the years we haven't done so well there, but then again the stats probably don't look so good because for a good number of years we did have uh, Barcelona in the knockout stages and that most definitely added most of the losses I would have said. But yeah, anyway, on Tuesday we did come away with a very, very good victory. An overall very good performance to go with that win. So to touch on the team, Raya maintained his place. For Ramsdale, I thought if there was a if there was a chance of Ramsdale possibly regaining his position, it would be this game because Raya's had a, a few questionable performances. And I thought, well, if you're rotating, if you're being fair, Ramsdale would get a shot just like Raya got a, an opportunity to, to stake his game for the first team. It would happen the same way, but I think it's very telling with the situation now that that Arteta very much sees Raya as number one and he's going to keep faith with him. I think that's how we're going to see things go. I do think Ramsdale will see game time against West Ham in the League Cup but I think for the foreseeable future the spot is probably Raya's to lose but he doesn't want to drop him now I can understand a good number of reasons why that may be the case not drop, not want to drop him because of the confidence thing so it's a really fine line of of how to deal with, deal with the situations like don't want to ruin Raya's confidence, but also at the same time, does Ramsdale deserve an opportunity to, to, to get his first team spot back? Um, yeah, it's, it's a difficult one to call, but I think Arteta has really shown his cards on this one now. He opted for Tomiyasu at left back for Zinchenko. Tough away game, completely understandable, and I... I agree, I can get on board with this for sure. Party injured again in training. Don't really know what's going on with Party here. I mean, there is rumours, but they are rumours. They're not, nothing more. But there might be an element of truth in it. So no Party, but we maintain the same shape that we did against Chelsea. And like Manchester City, we have Jorginho. And Rice being able to advance more forward, and we really got to see more of why we wanted him in the first place. Odegaard, Sakia, Martelay, and Jesus completes the the attacking lineup. Um, yeah, I, I honestly I could not really argue against the starting lineup. Obviously, I would prefer Party, but if he's not available, he's not available. Would I have lined up in this same way? I'm not sure, but if he is going to, then this is the this is the way I personally would have liked to have lined up as well. But yeah, um, question marks over party's future. I think I, uh, he he's already been out for a period of time. Comes back out again. He's a he is a quality player like he does offer something to our midfield that we don't have when he's not there but if he's gonna be absent like this like what's the point you need players who is fit ready to play on a regular basis and unfortunate to say party does not fit that bill so Let's have a look. Do we have some stats here? Shortboard stats center. Yeah, that's usually the place to go. Oh, I can't see with possession or whatnot. Anyway, it was a bit of a difficult game for me to judge at times because I was actually having troubles with the stream over many periods. But I think for an away performance, it was very, very sturdy. Defensively, I thought we were good. We didn't really give up many glorious chances to Sevilla they didn't really create too much but then to be honest neither did we ourselves we had I think we had like two seriously great chances in the first half we took one of them uh, Martin and both of them are brilliant 
brilliant piece of skill from Jesus. Completely took out two defenders and a perfectly rated ball. And uh, Martinelli with the finish, fantastic. He should have honestly had a... That should have been his second goal of the game. But the first one he had opportunity as a one versus one again. Should be taking that one. Um, but yeah, it was a relatively uneventful first half. I think we had a, a degree of control. We... I think we were building up, building up okay, but we just didn't have, didn't have a, like a real cutting edge. It kind of felt a little bit like the Lons game. Had a couple of chances, but didn't really create a great degree of um, goal scoring opportunities. But neither did our opponents. And then uh, second half, Jesus fabulous, fabulous finish into the top corner. Um, and at that point, the game was looking <laughs> not done as such, but we were in complete control. Didn't look in trouble, threatened to get a third goal. That truly would have killed the game off. And then we get hit by another corner. And I'm not really understanding how. I mean, I understand how because we zone or mark. And maybe, maybe questions need to be asked to this because we do concede regularly from corners and that is a bit of a problem but the one thing that really stood out to me was we had Gabby Jesus competing aerially for the ball with the guy who scored I don't know what was his name Goodell, Goodell whatever who is relatively tall now I don't know how we are getting ourselves in these situations where we're getting our shortest players marking taller players. Obviously, I know it's a zonal thing, but I think that might be something to to take a look at. So the game was killed, it was dead, and then just from a set piece, they, they're right back in it, and the game changes. Again, we were threatening to score again, and we were creating a lot more opportunities in the second half. Maybe that was because Sevilla was opening up a little bit because they were losing, they were chasing the game. But we weren't able to take any more of our chances. And then I'd say in the last 10 minutes or so, we were low block, sitting behind, sitting very deep in just trying to see out the result pretty much which was inviting pressure I, but to be honest for the most part we did deal with everything that came into the box very well apart from one questionable incident where Raya didn't connect exactly as he would have liked with the cross and it ended up looping up over the bar thankfully so all in all I thought it was an, a very 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 good away performance in Europe these places are very difficult to come to and yeah for overall the performance as well we didn't actually give up too much to Sevilla whilst we had some big chances of our own and could have killed the game off but didn't and they only scored from a set piece but that is a continuous problem at the moment it seems so some things that I did notice I want to mention about the game that I did see um but I think it's worth mentioning. It's just something I, for me, Saliba and Gabriel for me are, they are top as a partnership. They are, they are top as a partnership. But the goals that we've conceded so far this season, none of them have come through mistakes by them. It's always an, it's always an error by another player or space being created on another player, but not on these two. These two are absolute rocks, and I think they're both great. Uh, Tommy Yasu, I think, deserves an, a, a real mention here. The, the His stamina is absolutely incredible. His work rate is incredible. You could really see it throughout the game, but mostly when we were... Again, the final 10 minutes, he was still sprinting, trying to press the cross, the potential crosses. 
yeah, I I really dig his energy out there. He's um, you know, and his general play, uh, on Tuesday as well. But what really stood out for me was the work rate, and the stamina. Um, so I was really really impressed with him. And Rice, I think, even though he's played very well all season for us, I think. I'm starting to see a much better player than what I thought he was before we signed. The way that he was driving past players at times, like effortlessly, keeps the passes very, very simple for the most part. But his driving runs, they stood out for me on Tuesday. They were excellent. Um, Odegaard very quiet again not a good game from him Saka first half was very poor gave up possession far too easily but was much improved in the second half Martinelli took his uh, his goal well had a great chance before could have done better and Jesus had a, had some real excellent moments of quality of the goal obviously but the that sumptuous Cruyff turn to take out players and then the inch perfect pass for the assist as well. So good for him. Uh, I really like the the work rate that I seen from Trossard when it came on. It looked urgent. He looked up for it. But I compared this to Enketia and I was absolutely furious watching him on Tuesday. Now I look at the re- I look at the rest of the team, they're all working their butts off. But I see Enketia come on in the eighty first minute and he is dawdling around the pitch as if he had just been playing the entire game. I see I see Tom like I said, Tommy Asu in comparison. The way he pressed at times, he was like, We you know, we need to see this up. Enketia was casual. I thought it was absolutely disgusting and it in, it enraged me. His half ass pressing towards the end of the game, dude. Man, you you're on for the last 10 15 minutes of the game. Sprint. You're not saving yourself or anything. Use your energy. Sprint. Make the difference. And that is very telling of his f t- very telling of 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 him. It for me if he's not sprinting and pressing with purpose in those moments when we're hanging on and he's just come on, that to me is a huge problem. Because if he's not putting the effort in, he certainly doesn't have the quality to justify it. Absolutely none. I thought it was absolutely disgusting the way he was was jogging around and jogging with the press. I thought that was disgusting. And for me, there is no way he starts this weekend. Absolutely no way for me. No way. There's been times at the beginning of the season where uh, Jesus wasn't available and he was picking Enketia over Trossard. And he would say he, I think he made, there was some quote saying, in training, he was telling me that he had to play or something. Not not verbally, but like through his body language or something. Well, I didn't see that on Tuesday. And I did see that from Trossard. So I wanted just to make those honorary mentions. So it do, like I said, it doesn't, it doesn't look like Jesus is going to be available for this weekend. And I do not want to see Enketia based on this. And prior... My, my prior experience with him and what I think of him as a player. I do not want him to start on the weekend. He doesn't deserve it. So if Hayes is, Hayes is an unavailable, what I would like to see against Sheffield United, either Havertz or Trossard. I think we're probably going to be more offensive in terms of the midfield. So I do expect... I do expect not to be running like a double pivot. I don't. I, I think Jorginho won't be featuring in this game. So maybe Havertz in midfield and or Havertz in midfield and uh, Trossard up top. 
Depends which way he wants to go. We haven't seen Vieira for a little while. Um, so yeah, the upcoming game, I would probably look at if he's got if he's gonna go right. <laughs> If he's going to go Raya, I think that that's really telling. Though, I can understand it. Like, I bet I think they're both good. So, if whoever he picks, I can understand the reasons for it. I want to see White. I want to see Saliba. I want to see Gabriel. I want to see us get a clean sheet. Now, I think you could... I think Tamiyasu did enough, more than enough, to say, yeah, you know what? I should be starting again on the weekend, and I couldn't argue against it. So I would say the same back five, as in Sevilla for Sheffield United. I think Rice is going to return back to the holding role. Um, Odegaard is going to play. You know, if you need some confidence, goals or whatnot, Sheffield United at home is a, a very good fixture to kind of maybe get kick, kick started again. Um if Saka's fully fit, does he does he play Martinelli? I think we don't take this likely, but I think there is room for some changes. So, same back five, Rice, Odegaard will play. For me, for me, I would like to. Hmm. How to go this? You know, I think over. I think over the last few games, Trossard has been key, and he's got some really important goals. I think he does deserve a start. So I would probably look at Trossard through the middle, or yeah. Trossard, Trossard in the lineup. Maybe I put him on the right for Saka. Give Saka some game game time off. Yeah, you know what? I would probably look at Martinelli on the left. I'd go Trossard right. Havertz in the Havertz centre forward, and Vieira. I think there is more than enough quality on that pitch to beat Sheffield United at home. And it also gives game time to Vieira, gives Saka a game off, um, gets Trossard in the lineup, because I think he does deserve some some game time. And yeah, it gives Havers again the opportunity to to score, to play. And probably his his own personal his own personal favourite role or favourite role, I should say. So that's how I would sort of go into Sheffield United. Strong, but some changes. I mean, if, if things don't go well, we, we, we can always bring Saka, etc. in if we need it. If we need to be a bit more technical and build up, we can always bring in Zinchenko. But I think there's... I think those changes for the weekend would be positive, but do I expect to see them? Probably not. But um, but yeah, I'm I'm fully expecting a victory at Sheffield United. Um, anything but would be disappointing. Anyway, guys, great victory versus Sevilla, which now puts us in control in the group as we have two home games, which I do fancy us to uh, come through. So yeah, looking good in Champions League, looking good in the league. Let's uh, get another victory against Sheffield United. Thanks for watching, guys. See you guys in the next one.